Okay, we're going to go through a quick tutorial on how to color separate your vector art in Adobe Illustrator so everything is film and print ready and we've got all the important color information we need for your project. Uh, so we're going to jump down into Illustrator and open up this document that we've got here. This is your uh, working document. You've got strokes and a bunch of things that you can edit. Uh, we're going to make some changes to this that will uh, make it somewhat uneditable and so you're not going to want to like use your actual piece for this. We're going to copy this, jump into a new document and paste it and work in a completely new document on this one. Uh, you can see with this selection here we've got these colors, we've got the yellow, the red overlaps the black, the blue overlaps several colors. Uh, this doesn't work for screen printing. We uh, typically don't print color on top of color in most spot color circumstances. So it's going to be a situation where we're going to need to take care of. We're going to go up to object here scroll down to expand. This is going to expand our fill and stroke um, and then with the use of the Pathfinder tool we're going to be able to flatten this artwork. So now we've expanded that so we no longer have editable strokes, everything's flattened. Uh, we go to window, make sure our Pathfinder is selected. We've got ours open here already on the right. There's two rows here. Second row, third column, there's an option that says merge. We're going to click on that you can see with our selection everything's kind of cleaned up. It's like a cookie cutter. We don't have colors sitting on top of each other any longer. They're all independent. Uh, next we are going to go into our swatches panel and we've got a bunch of swatches going on. They kind of get in our way when we're making film so we're going to go ahead and get rid of these and uh, build our own swatches. So we'll start by selecting the white, scroll down to our last swatch, holding shift, click on the last swatch. Now everything is selected. We're going to go ahead and delete these swatches. We don't need them. Now we're going to go ahead and use our magic wand. We can hit Y to select the black. Go back into swatches. We're going to create a new swatch here. We're going to call this spot black. Under color type, we're going to make sure we have spot color selected. There we go. We've got our spot black. Uh, we can see it's a spot color because it's tabbed. We're going to repeat this step for the remaining three colors. Yellow. the cyan blue color and last but not least the red okay so now we're working in spot color kind of everything uh, should be kind of uh, where we need it to be but we're gonna go ahead and click on window again and go to separations preview I already have this opened up but you can click on that and make sure it's checked. It's going to pull up this pa panel. We can click Overprint Preview here and uh, it's going to get rid of uh, our background color. We're going to click off of CMYK and uh, you can notice something interesting happened there. We just actually lost kind of a little piece of artwork in here. So one of these uh, black strokes that we had was a different black. So we're going to turn this off. We're going to use our hover over this with our wand. Select it click on our spot black and now click back in overprint preview and we've converted that to our spot color. This happens often where there will be many blacks. Sometimes when you're designing it just happens there are many blacks in a document. We need everything to be unified into one black. So now we've got these spot colors to work with and this is kind of like a print check uh, or a press check. We can go ahead and start turning some of these off we can see kind of this is our first plate, our yellow plate, our red plate, our blue plate, and our black plate. And so there you go, you've got color separated artwork. Uh, we've got colors that uh, work for us. And if, if you wanted to take this a step further and you actually had Pantone colors, we can go ahead and go into the swatches panel, click new color group from the colors that we have here. Oops, I didn't have all of them selected. So we're going to select everything. Hit new color group. Call this Disney Tune. And now it's given us kind of this new color group, but it's also activated this color wheel down here, which is kind of neat. We can edit or apply color group. If we click on this, we scroll down to this drop down, scroll up to color books. 
it's going to give us our Pantone color books. Uh, we print 95% of our stuff in water base, and so we primarily work with a Pantone Plus solid uncoated color book when we're mixing your colors. So we'll go ahead and click on that. We're going to hit OK. It's going to ask us if we want to save these changes. That's fine. So now we uh, have converted these to Pantone colors. Kind of obviously, it's turned the red into more of a pink. So that's probably not going to work, but it's given us a pretty good color, Pantone 299U for the blue and Pantone yellow U, and the spot black is still spot black, so we can go ahead and convert all of these to the closest Pantone colors possible. Sometimes you might actually need to get into the color book to pick the exact color that you desire, kind of, but for color separation purposes, we've got a clean file here, kind of, that's ready to go, kind of, that we're not going to have any delays on, and, uh, that's all we need to do. So we're going to go ahead and save this. And you'll email it off to us, and uh, we'll go ahead and make you some great shirts. Thanks for watching.